rotating ring-like devices where men with military equipment walk through and, and meet Raw on the other side and bring their nuclear weapons with them? No. They were used for passing information and passing inhabitants this direction. Oh, by other cultures coming this way, but not by us. By by else. by P plus forty fives and P plus fifty twos, both Orions and J Rods. The treaties were basically inflicted on us by the Orions. As they were enforced upon us by the Orions that we needed to do what we needed to do when they figured out that we weren't able to handle the issue ourselves. They looked at their own history and said, huh, look at the cavemen and women. Then I found out that because he had carried the, the, um, the attitude that the Magi were not closely watching anything which it was like NEOs or any, you know, the near-Earth orbiting asteroids or anything like that. They weren't concerned about it at all. Well, then subsequently during a conversation, I found out that in fact they were. The information from her relative was in fact that they were aware that there would be an Islamic attack upon the United States uh, as early, meaning they were aware as early as the mid-1990s that it would be coming sometime in the new millennium. Well, right on, smack on the beam. The Orions could trust us so much where they could hand us a cube and we misused it to the state that we misused it. Where they then had to inflict a treaty system upon us. But the moon's not like, you know, the most inhabitable planet. Uh, no, there. but it's the place that we're allowed to be right now. Okay. Do I sound like I'm weighing my words? <laughs> that our emotions affect our state, our physical state. That our, our orientation to the, to the energies, which are available from the, the cosmos, if you will, uh, affect the state of our DNA, affect the state of our health, and they are applying that as a, an experimental protocol, a rubric, if you will, to change the state of the people on board so that they can sample them for biological material. I have a question about the probabilities, Dan. The, the, the low probability... When just, you ask a question, I'm really yeah. serious. <laughs> the low probability, um, according to what I understand, what you said earlier, is 19%. Is that still valid? Because that's still playing Russian roulette with, with one bullet in a barrel of five. And is it not? It's, that's, yeah. that's, and that, and actually, it's, it's slightly worse than that. In all honesty, it's slightly worse than that because there's only an 85% confidence level to that 19%. So, so that doesn't quite sound like we can all relax. I don't think it's a, a well. No, I don't think it's a question. I think we need to. I think we need to do the right things. And and there was a a um, uh, a correlation to the successful and unsuccessful outcomes, which involved the people of the world being united in purpose for survival and for care for uh, our world. And that's the reason why we did this, this crazy thing. And I, 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 you know, it sounded crazy, it looked crazy, but we did it because it was the right thing to do. And I ended up having to send a team of people out canvassing the regular people of the world and handing flyers out stating that the time had arrived for us to pray for unity. And I would still encourage that seriously and sincerely. Um, you know, I, I, I lost people. Uh, I was in charge of, of a team, and some of them died uh, as a result. Well, a couple of them from accidents, and that, you know, can happen anywhere. But a couple of them were put to death for proselytizing. And, and so I bear that on my soul now for put to death for proselytizing in a, in a in a country in a country where Meaning where China. Uh, there was in fact two deaths in China and we also uh, lost some people in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. uh, and a couple other places uh, I didn't make public how many all we lost or how many all we had but uh, they did their jobs, and the information was handed out, and we did the best we could. Anyway, uh, you were you were asking okay. about the you were asking about the the Stargate, uh, the possible locations and all of that, on on 
June 16th of 2003 in RV number 0403, uh, Deborah was requested to um, do a remote viewing session, um, a sole one, a series of them, in fact, that she conducted. And she uh, found several locations. Uh, among them was, in fact, uh, uh, Voloshanka. Uh, and she even said, to the north by the tundra in Russia. Uh, and in the... Uh, um, Southwest and Tibetan, Southwest Tibetan Mountains. I'm sorry, I'm still a little bit thinking about my men and women. Uh, in uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Moschen, M-O-S-J-O-E-N, in Norway, and that was a a big, big hullabaloo. There was one actually. Uh, the equipment was actually removed from there. So what you're Syria, saying, Turkey. You're saying she remote viewed the locations of these the of the stargate. In fact, she did. And, and the reason the reason why I I um, reacted to pull this out in your question number nine. It says how many LGs are were there? How many man-made stargates? Where are they? And you gave a list of of possible countries. In that list, you mentioned Bulgaria. Right. Well, on the second page of it, she's got the Pyrian Mountains in Bulgaria listed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, uh, I just wanted to kind of let you know. Thank you. And a couple points in Egypt. And uh, um, um, she uh, didn't, in fact, in this one, mention Iraq because she was working separately for Iraq. On February the 4th of 2003, she did a, um, a special RV. RV says, I, I came up with the following in my session. I saw a place 10 miles south-southeast of Baghdad. This, by the way, is a place where we ended up actually raiding and removing what they thought were rings for what they called weapons of mass destruction. Well, there were rings, all right, but it was a different kind of weapon of mass destruction. I pictured a big tree on the ground surface of this location. Now think about how Saddam was finally found. Yes. Behind the tree, there was a hole in the ground. It had a piece of wood over it. I saw a man looking and feeling like Saddam have a guard lift the wood over the hole. Saddam then entered the hole and jumped into what looked like a platform at the top of a set of stairs. In, in remote viewing, I don't remote view, but in remote viewing from everything I understand from her, um, time gets mixed up, overlaid, and sometimes yes. off-shifted. Yes. And uh, she clearly saw him in the, the spider hole. Mm -hmm. um, she also indicated that um, she found the uh, work area down there and, and, in fact, drew the, the, the work area, which they ended up finding and finding the one gate in in Iraq. Okay. Interesting stuff, yeah, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are kind of um, getting off the topic a little bit. That's um, good. <laughs> of, star <laughs> of stargates and, and all that. Um, we Am I causing that? that? <laughs> I'm sorry? So am I causing that? I hope not. <laughs> um, we know that Kayela escaped through a stargate mm -hmm. um, and with your assistance. That was described in our, one of our last videos. Yeah. Um, and E.T. went home. Yes, E.T. went home. Yeah. And um, the interesting thing about that is that you also had an experience in which you sort of fell into the Stargate and mm -hmm. then kind of didn't go all the way, so you I was stayed in this reality. I, well, kind of. Kind of? Uh, I was expelled uh, several yards away onto a, a slab of, um, it was either limestone or granite, I'm not really sure, or sandstone. I, I, all I know is that it was hard uh, <laughs> when I landed on it. Uh, and it was on the other side of the tarpaulin over um, the area was separated human ET side for the actual staging around the Stargate. It was the military operation. And um, I ended up on the other side of the, of the barrier.